I am always on the lookout for more creative ideas that can help people to save more money, to spend less, spend smarter, put more money in their pocket. So putting these lists together is a lot of fun for me. And today I have 27 of those tips to help you live below your means. So obviously not all of these are going to work for any everyone. If they do, amazing, fantastic. The point of these is to share them and maybe you can adapt it to your life or maybe one is like, oh my goodness, yeah, totally, I'm going to do that. And if that's the case, put it down in the comments which one is your favorite. So again, just remember that maybe not all of these are for you, where you are in your life, that's okay, but maybe the next one is. So let's get started and discuss the 27 ways to spend less and save more money every day. The first one is to put in place a rule where you have a no spend weekend every single month. So you pick a weekend, maybe it's the first weekend or the last weekend, and that is the weekend where you guys do no spending. Now, no spending on non-necessities. If you need groceries, go get groceries. If you need toilet paper, go get some toilet paper. If your child's shoe just fell apart randomly and they have to go to school tomorrow, go get a pair of shoes. But it's meaning that you don't go out to restaurants, you don't just go leisurely shopping, you don't go to maybe an event that you have to pay for. You find things that you can do that you don't have to spend any money. And this is great, especially if it's the last weekend of the month and you are currently living paycheck or page to paycheck and you get to the end of the month and you are really having to scrape by. Doing this helps you tremendously and it helps you gain also discipline over spending. The second tip here is to have water instead of sodas, juices, teas. Those are extremely expensive, especially if you go out to a restaurant. If you've been out to a restaurant lately, you can probably attest to the fact that drink prices, soda, tea, have gone up tremendously. Not only is it better on your wallet, but it's healthier for you too. Personal experience this year, I ended up with two kidney stones and my sweet tea fixation, even if I had had it just once a day with not that much sugar, there is something in tea that actually helps contribute to kidney stones. So it's one thing I had to relearn this year. Time to go back to mainly water. Number three, if you want to get together with friends, invite them over. This is so much more fun, doing game nights, having everybody bring a, a side or a dish that they specialize. That way you can have all the time you want. We were at a restaurant recently and it was so loud. We could not hear anything we said. My husband and I were about uh, two and a half feet away and it was insane, especially if a restaurant has tall ceilings. So getting a group of people together at a restaurant is certainly even louder. I mean, if you're going to do it, go ahead. But if you've got the option to have everybody come over, you're not only gonna save money, but you're gonna have a much better time. Number four, don't go shopping just to go shopping, meaning have it as a hobby. Have it as a thing you're, you and your friends just go and do. Go window shopping and expect it. You're not going to be tempted for something because you will. These marketing companies are really, really good. And you might, might think right now you're not going to buy it. But when you go home, maybe you're thinking about it. The best thing to do is avoid the temptation and find a different hobby, a different way to entertain yourself. Number five is to shop for holidays or Christmas all year long. Don't just wait. I talked about this until I'm blue in the face or as blue as my shirt. I have a list on my phone and whenever I think of an idea for a gift or I hear somebody mention something and they're a person I give to, then I will write that down. And even if it's six months or later, they will be, oh, I <laughs> didn't realize I even mentioned this and that's the gift that you give them. But I had a, a viewer recently who said, that starting, I think in June, they buy one gift every month. So they don't necessarily just wait for something to go on sale, but instead of saving a little bit every month to spend in bulk at the end of the year, say it's for Christmas, they buy the gift throughout the year, which I think is a great idea because you also don't have to then spend or worry, first of all, about not being able to find the right item or maybe spend at its peak cost during the holiday season. One side note and tip here is keep in mind when you were doing this that 
it is something you know that they would like or that they would love because if you do buy it ahead of time then there's absolutely a chance you they wouldn't be able to return it so if you're if it's a situation where it might be somebody who you don't really know that much maybe it's just a situation where you save money until you get closer to that time frame just to make sure that you don't ha not have the option to be able to return it so number six is to pack snacks even when you're going an hour away from or from your house <laughs> or going on a, a shopping trip or maybe even to the grocery store to make sure that you don't get hungry. Somebody's gonna get hungry, especially if you have children, having snacks just in your car, whether you take a cooler with you every time you go or you just bring some healthy snacks with you is a great idea because you're going to, again, with the healthy thing, save money and have much healthier option than if you just heard I'm hungry I'm hungry I'm hungry and you didn't have much time and you end up stopping for fast food or at the at the gas station and getting we know what they all have yeah not good for you stuff number seven is for anybody who goes to the movies so here's my thing with movies they come out rather quickly more recently I've noticed so when they come out in the theater and when they come out on your streaming platform there is rarely a movie that is so fantastic you need to see it on the big screen. The thing here is, I'm not saying not to go to the movie theater. What I'm saying is, instead of going all the time, go to the movies as a treat. The less often you do something, the more special it is and the more you remember it. Just think about the things that you do all the time. They become routine or a habit. They don't seem special. It's the things that you do rarely that seem like a special occasion and the ones that you end up remembering later on. Number eight, if you're having a hard time sticking to your grocery budget, and there wasn't, there was a poll I did more recently that said, what do you usually go over budget on? And more than 50% of the answers were groceries. One of my tips here of a, a way to stay within budget is to try to do grocery pickup. The thing about grocery pickup is when you're on, let's say the app or on your computer and you're adding the items, you can add everything that's on your list and then you can go to the checkout and you can see how much it totals. And if you know you're well within budget, great. Maybe you've got a little bit extra money and you know that canned beans were on sale this week so you add a few more cans. Or you see that you're over budget and you go back to, to your list and say, what here is not a necessity that I can cut so that I can stay within budget? The other thing that does is prevents from those temptation buys when you're out and the things that aren't on your list. Now, here's a tip as well. Always check this when you get home or check it as they're putting the bags in just to check everything off. If something when you get home, let's say it's a bad bag of apples or you're missing something, call the store right away. My store, it's happened a few times to me, um, they will give me 100% of the cost of that item back and I can go get a replacement item the same thing, maybe better apples for completely free. Number nine is to only have one streaming platform at a time that you are paying for. This is a tip that I got from one of you. It was genius. Cancel everything but one and watch all the shows on that one streaming platform because again, most of them come out in seasons now. So it's not like you have to hold on to it to see every new show every week. Watch everything that you want to watch on that one, cancel it, go back to the other streaming platform, maybe the new season has come out, and watch everything on that one. What you'll, if you if you have a bunch of streaming plat platforms is what you might realize is one of them just sits for a long time because there's really nothing else on it you want until the next season comes out. Why are you still paying for that? If you have this, this little rule that you set for yourself where you only have one at a time, it helps you get the most out of that one at the time and wash, rinse, repeat. All you do is cancel it, go on to the next one, you can come back. They don't restrict you from canceling it or from coming back whatsoever. You can always go back, just rotate them. It's actually a really genius idea that seems very obvious, but I didn't think about. Number 10 is so important. Always pay more than the minimum on your debt. Just because your car payment is, let's say, $500 a month and you have some extra disposable income, 
doesn't mean that you should only pay 500. Try to get rid of that debt as soon as possible. And one way to do that is to quit, is to easily chip away at it. That way it's reduced. So maybe you pay $50 extra on it per month. Well, that's going to cut down considerably on the amount of times you have that loan and a lot on the interest rate. I've mentioned this before, but if you were shown the sticker price from what you pay, let's say for a six year loan on a car where you paid the minimum payment plus the interest, you would probably not purchase that car. That is not what you see. You see the base price, but that's not what you pay if you do a loan. Pay more than the minimum on your debt. Number 11 is a soap box I will get on time and time again. And it is to take a social media break or better yet, delete it. Social media is ruining people. I am so passionate about this and the studies that are coming out now because we've had enough time to see younger people who've had social media all of their you know, adult or, or teenage adult years, we're seeing so much more data on how bad it is. I'm being completely serious here when I think, think about this. I mean, these things are mindless waste of time, not only the impact they're having on us, but the time. Time is non-renewable and when you're feeling stressed out or you're trying to avoid the thing that might be a little bit hard, you go straight to social media because you can just completely glaze over. But you're wasting time and you're putting off the inevitable which you still need to do. These apps make people feel worse about themselves and the world and when you are sad because of the inundation of this negative content, and again, most of it exaggerated to get views and clicks, then you might make, try to make yourself happy. How can, I, how can I make myself happy? Go shopping or do something else to spend money or waste more time. But that is only a fleeting moment. You see others' lives and you think, oh, they appear so much better than yours. They are curated. But you might say, well, I have a social media. It's great because I can keep up with insert person or it's nice to have a distraction sometimes if you're really into it you really want to think about it and you you don't necessarily are on board with what i'm saying think about the benefits and the harm write them out do the benefits of this thing outweigh the harm that we are seeing that it does i doubt it okay that's all i gotta say just weigh the benefits and the harm off my soapbox on a lighter note, number 12, when you're making dinners throughout the week, whenever you're actively cooking, cook just enough to have maybe a two or three extra meals, depending upon the amount of people in your household. Maybe it's just a couple of people and you only really wanna do one extra meal, but make just enough that's a little bit more. And what this does is provide leftovers throughout the week that are diverse. So whereas you might see here somebody talk about meal prepping and it's, you know, you've seen it in the little containers and it's some vegetables, some rice and some chicken, vegetables, rice, chicken, vegetables, rice, chicken. And hey, maybe you can do that and eat the exact same thing every day because you have incredible discipline. Great, fantastic, a level above, I'm all there for you. But if you can't and you want something more diverse, you can still get the same results by just when you do go to cook, cooking more of that item. If you cook four nights a week and you have then four extra or eight extra um, dinners, then you can switch them up and not have to see, eat the same thing on repeat. Number 13, oh. just do this. Are you in control of the thermostat in your household? If not, or you know who is, ask them to bump it up or, or you do this yourself, one degree or down at one degree, you know, depending upon, I don't know, it's hot or cold outside. Just one degree at a time. You're barely going to notice this, but your bill is really going to notice this. I'm just saying the cost of electricity and heat right now is, is it's, it's high. If you can just bump down a degree or two, I doubt that anybody will notice. And if they do, they're going to get used to it rather quickly. Number 14, I am the first one when somebody asks me for my email address at a store, no, you're not getting it. But let me tell you the one time you should do this. Put your phone number in, the grocery store, the amount of rewards. So what's happened is the extreme couponing shows and everything kind of messed up the couponing world. Stores are going away from, um, you know, the paper coupons, there's digital coupons now. So you need the app so you can put the digital coupon on there 
And the other thing about the loyalty programs is they really do have good um, things that give back to you, meaning like, for example, price per gallon. So the, the store that I'm with, you get uh, fuel points and I have gotten up to $1 off per gallon before. And this has happened at least three times over the past few years. So if you get so many fuel points, you can really save at the gas pump and why not do it if there's no harm. And the grocery store, you can click off of having them send you emails. They don't bother you, This mine, mine in particular, via text. So there's no loss there. I'm already spending money going to the grocery store. Sign up for the loyalty program. Number 15. When is the last time you looked at your cell phone provider's data plan options? So let's say you are with a company and you're like, I have great service. I've heard nothing but bad things about other companies. I really don't want to change. These companies are changing up their plans because they're realizing that they have other smaller competitors that they're having to uh, compete with. Because of that, you may be able to go into your account and change your plan. Maybe get even a better data package for less money. Go in and just check it out. You never know if you could sign up for something that's going to save you a lot of money. Number 16, talking earlier about drinking more water and taking snacks with you, one thing that I really recommend is always carrying water with you. Since I was pregnant, when I start, when I was pregnant, I had to have water with me at all times. And that has not changed in the seven years since I was pregnant. I will start getting a little bit like of anxiety if I forget my water, because what I know is my body continually needs water. And oftentimes when you're out and you may feel hungry or, or even when you're home and you might feel hungry, or maybe you have a headache, it might be, be because you're dehydrated and you need more water. So try to pick up the habit of always taking water with you. Maybe you get a nice well, um, uh, reusable water uh, container, like a, like a Yeti or whatever, any kind of cups you wanna find, and you always bring that with you, but always bring water with you. It's going to save you uh, and be healthier. That's kind of the kick of this video. There's lots of things that are saving money and also being healthy. So hey, win-win. Number 17, if you're trying to cut back on your grocery bill and you've realized that the cost of meat is extremely high, then try a couple of things. The first one is Meatless Monday or any other day of the week. And when my, when my, ugh, can't talk today. When my husband and I first did this, we did it as Meatless Monday. And so it was fun to try to figure out when you're used to eating meat for every single meal growing up your whole life, it's definitely something different. But it was fun to try to figure out how I could make dinner you know, nutritious and filling without having meat. The other thing that you can do is use meat as a side item. You know, you've got your plate and whereas, I don't know why, but for a long time, people had to have meat as the main course and the biggest portion of the plate. It's not necessary. Have that, that vegetable or that greenery be more than half of the plate and then maybe use meat as an accent uh, or a side item. Number 18 whether it's the grocery store or any other retailer, typically the items that are placed in the front of the store or throughout the store that are at eye level are the items that give the retailer the highest return, the highest profit margin. They aren't the ones that are the best deal for you. This knowing helps you to look beyond those quick convenience places and to be smarter than the retailer. Number 19, sometimes when we create goals or we're trying to aim at something, get somewhere, which is goal, we kind of forget or we don't have it at the top of the mind all the time. And one way to do this is to create a visual tracker. I've talked about this many times. We're trying to pay off our house early. So we have a picture of a house. It's just a outline of a home and we've drawn off sections into it, of it that are $10,000 increments. And as we get through another $10,000, we color it in and we put the date. This helps us keep a visual, helps us keep it at the top of the mind, shows us what the purpose of these things that we're doing in this frugal life, that's our goal. But maybe it's debt that you want to pay off. And there's plenty of trackers and things that you can print off online. Perhaps you have maybe five credit cards and you pull up um, you pull, I've seen jars. <laughs> so it looks like jars that you print out. Maybe there's five jars and you, there, you list, you know, Capital One, Visa, MasterCard, and then you put how much it is. And as you pay it off, 
you color it in and you put this on your fridge or on the closet mirror or on the bathroom mirror, wherever it's going to be right in your face so that you can be reminded of your purpose and the point of this frugal life and saving money to get to your financial goals. Number 20, buy classic and neutral. What I mean by this specifically is with like clothing or expensive item clothing, like a nice jacket or nice work um, outfit or you know suit or a nice tailored dress or furniture, your new dining table or new couch. Buying classic and neutral is the way to go and quality. Now, quality and price don't always equate, but my point here is to buy those quality things and spend a little bit more money if you have to making sure it's still a good deal because they're going to last longer rather than buying that cool velvet purple couch because you know it's just really going to go with the aesthetic of this apartment and then you move to somewhere that has a completely traditional vibe and you go hmm that's not going to work rather than doing that buy classic pieces that are going to last for a long time still accessorize the things that are inexpensive like colorful pillows or textures or trends by pillows that you can put different pillowcases on. The things that are cheaper to replace when you've gotten bored of them or they are trendy or a, you know, a special pop of a different color. Number 21, is there a big purchase that you want to make? Now, big is relative to you and your situation. Big could be $5,000 or something. It could be big uh, saving and paying cash for a car. It could be big spending and buying a nice a photography camera for $400. Whatever the big thing is for you, save for it. If you've never done before, save for it. Don't buy it right away. It builds character. I know this is crazy. We can just go get it right now. We can, we can give in to our impulse right now. The person who just puts it on a credit card doesn't learn self-discipline and self-discipline is a valuable lesson to learn in life. It pays off to have self-discipline in life. Number 22, before you go and prepare your meal plan, if that's what you're doing, which is also a good tip, or you go shopping for groceries, make sure you go through your pantry, your fridge and your freezer. Okay. Even before you decide what you want to make for the week, Go through, do a pantry tour, a fridge tour, a freezer tour, because you're going to see if there's something maybe that's getting ready to go over or you have excess of or something in the fridge or the freezer that's a leftover that maybe you could have as a side and put something a little bit, uh, something else with it, create a different meal. This is going to help you save money on your groceries and reduce weight because, waste because people, reduce, people waste so much food. Not only do they waste money, but they waste the actual food after they've bought it. Number 23 is one that I'm fairly sure I do often. I do a lot because it scratches that itch and it is to abandon your shopping cart. Now, not in the store because that's just rude to the people and employees who work there. Don't do that. I'm talking about online. They're really like, I, was, I wanna go see, it. oh, there's a sale. Let me go see. Go and check out the sale. Add some things to your cart. All right, cool. What's going to happen here is, and leave it, meaning close out, click off, go read a book or go do some work. There's a couple of things that are going to happen here. The biggest thing is that you've, you're going to feel that itch has been scratched. You're going to say, mm, now that I see the total of that cart, I don't think that I, I, want to, I want to check out. It's very different than being at the store and you don't get smacked in the face until you're at the register with all the stuff. And, and most people don't feel very comfortable going, yeah, that's a little, I didn't realize I had that much stuff. Ah, can I, no, they go, okay, here's the credit card. And then they leave and they feel terrible for how much they spent. When you do it online and you put it all in the cart and then you see the total, you can back away quickly. <laughs> you can click out of that thing. The other thing that can happen is you could get one of those, hey, you left your things and some things in the cart. Uh, would you like a 20% off coupon code to go back and purchase the things? And maybe it's been a little bit of time and you go back and you're like, oh, well, with that discount, I really do love this thing, but I wasn't really to spend it, spend that much money, but now I have this discount code and it's within budget. Those are a couple of things that could happen if you try this abandon your cart method. Number one of, you know, you scratching that itch is 90% of the time going to be enough. 
Number 24 goes into actually making more money. Turn a hobby into a side hustle. There's nothing better than having income from something you love and enjoy doing that you were doing already. Perhaps you're really good at math or super into correcting grammar and writing mistakes. Maybe you should tutor some students or maybe you like mowing lawns. My husband loves to mow. It's like a Zen meditation thing for him. Well, tell those neighbors who work 80 hours a week, you'd be happy to help them for you know, X amount, amount per mo. Do you love animals? Maybe you could pet sit or dog walk. Do you like to crochet, woodwork? Are you super creative and crafty? If you haven't checked out Etsy, then do so. Plug in uh, into the search what it is that you, you love to do. Maybe you, you know, just to use an example, maybe you crochet doll clothes and you put in crochet doll clothes. What you're gonna see is things pop up that of people who do it and you may get an idea to think, you know what, I could do that. Oh my gosh, look how much they're making and they're selling a lot of that item that I could do and I could probably charge less. Monetize your talent. Number 25, review your bills and your receipts. Mistakes happen. You don't wanna be overcharged. Computers aren't always right. Fingers slip and add something twice. The wrong code could be put in and you're being charged a fee that you didn't sign up for and shouldn't be on there. Don't just go through and pay it and not pay any attention. Number 26, maybe you've noticed that portions are still fairly large at restaurants and you want to have that restaurant experience and you and your husband or your wife or your friend have similar taste meaning in food, why not split a meal? Especially one thing that I've noticed in my husband and I is when we always split is when we go and have fajitas, it's way too much. For me in particular, I can't eat a huge meal. I eat small amounts throughout the day. I just can't, I don't, that full fullness, I, I like small meals throughout the day. So I most certainly can't eat even a lunch portion of fajitas. So the next time you're out, maybe see if there's something on the menu that you could split and say, two plates, please. Number 27, I hope you do. And if you don't, I'm sorry, but if you do have an Aldi near you and you haven't tried it ever or in a while, go there. <laughs> Going to Aldi compared to a regular grocery store, even now with prices as high as they are, still saves me a considerable amount of money. Yes, it's a smaller grocery store. Yes, there's limited selections on. If you need something that's very specific, you're not gonna be able to maybe not find it there. You never know, you might be able to. But all of the basics and a whole lot of fun, interesting stuff is at Aldi. So if you haven't, go. I've got a video all about tips and tricks for Aldi. I will link at the end of this one. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you click on that little like button right, right down there, see it? Yeah, and the subscribe button's down there too. Just click on that one too. I would love to have you back for more videos.